A story told countless times. Be careful who your friends are. A crime, shocking and senseless. Did not know what was happening that night. And memories. It's, it's just an ongoing nightmare. Just as raw as that dreary morning in February 1986, when 22-year-old Michael Turpin's body was pulled from the water at Lakeside Golf Course. Cameron Brown has spent nearly every day since in prison, with time to think and pray, but not much time talking until now. She tried to make it out that I was some type of hideous, jealous lesbian monster. Karen had known Elizabeth Turpin only two months when she says she found herself in the middle of a bloody and merciless ambush. And as soon as Michael came to that door, he started. This is where Michael Turpin lived with Elizabeth, his wife of only five months. I felt like maybe I was her rescuer at that point. Believing claims that Michael was abusive, Karen says she and Keith Bouchard went to the apartment that night to tell Michael that Liz wanted a divorce. And I just fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. I fell for her story. Just one way Karen says Liz Turpin manipulated her, making her believe they could have a life together. Were you in love with her? I think I just wanted to uh, be there for somebody. I think I wanted to uh, feel like my life was, I was doing something for somebody. Now, in the state of mind I was in then, uh, probably, probably. As Karen tells it, she knew nothing of the murder plot until just before Keith told her to knock on the door. As soon as it opened, Keith attacked and stabbed Michael 19 times. From that point on, I became very responsible. I won't lie about it. I did everything that man told me to do, but I never put a knife in Michael Turpin. I never, never wanted him dead. I had no reason to. Keith Bouchard told a very different story in court, that Karen and Liz were lovers who planned Michael's murder to collect life insurance, testifying that Karen held Michael down as this butcher knife repeatedly pierced his body. I know the public sees me as a felon and a murderer. Now serving life and turned down twice for parole, Karen wants the public to see something else, remorse, repentance, and a resolve to make her life count. And when you wake up and you truly know what grace is, then you're on the right path. You miss Michael every day. Every day. Michael's father, Don Turpin, listened to parts of Karen's interview. I want them to know that their forgiveness is important to me. The Turpins. And my community. Okay. The, his family first, of course. I don't know what else I can do to earn a second chance at life. God may have forgiven her, but uh, it won't come from me. You know, my goal in life is to outlive her. So, I, thankfully, I'm in good health. <laughs> so, uh, I'll, be, I'll hope I'm here when, uh, when they put her in the ground.